All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Brenda Gillis. I am one of the tech and innovation coaches for the district. Um, we also have Mike Gizzo with us. Hi everybody. <laughs> We'll go back to Mike in just a minute. Um, just so you know, um, today's layout will be a one hour training session, the beginning of which will really run as a webinar. So I'm gonna just run through um, a bunch of resources and model for you the steps um, for organizing and customizing your Canvas course or our topics for this afternoon. Um, and then we will give you a link to the resources that I go through. You'll, you'll be able to add yourself to, um, I put a, them all in a Canvas course, so you'll be able to add yourself to that course and get to all of the resources that we've shared um, during the webinar portion. And then you'll have time to work and ask questions while Mike and I are still um, available to answer questions in the chat. Um, during today's uh, session, Mike will be monitoring the chat feature for us and trying to answer your questions. Um, he may let you know that I'm going to be covering something coming up, so if you can just hold on um, for that. He'll also interrupt me if there is um, a common theme happening or something that would benefit the whole group to go over again um, or um, any questions like that that are out there. We are recording this session, so please keep that in mind if you have your video share on. And we will be making the recordings available on the Canva professional development booklet links that you have. Uh, give us about 48 hours to get those edited and then the links up for you. So in a couple days, the recording of this will be available for you. And then we also have um, linked here, and I'm sure Mike will put the link in the chat for you, the link back to the PUSD Digital Teaching Resources site. Um, we are working on getting that updated. Um, many of you are probably familiar with it from last spring. Um, Mike, did you wanna add anything? Uh, that was good. So just to, just to kind of reiterate, we do have close to 200 people um, in this session today. so. While I will uh, do my absolute best to get answers to your questions as quickly as possible in that little chat window, um, it, it, just bear with me is all I'm asking. Um, you can also always email our team um, at edtech at powerusd.com. Um, you'll get faster results going through that email address as there's multiple of us monitoring it. Um, I'm sure you can imagine that uh, there's a lot of emails coming through right now, but we're here to help and we're happy to be doing this, so thanks. Awesome, all right, thanks Mike. Um, and just to go over for today's portion, we're gonna ask that you stick with us and follow along and then we will give you the resources so you can get in and kind of work along with us and we'll be available to answer questions in the chat as you're doing that. So first off, I'm gonna give you a tour of this um, customizing Canvas site and um, we will give you the link so that you can get into it after I run through it and do some um, kind of modeling the steps for you for organizing and customizing. All right, so in this Canvas course, um, we are going to talk about some course organization features. Um, the one that you'll hear us say a lot is modules. Um, modules are kind of like a virtual file folder for keeping content together. So um, in an elementary classroom, I might think of this as like, you know, my unit on weather, or this might be a module, might be my math for a specific unit, might be a module. Um, in upper grades and in uh, secondary, thinking about your topic or your units of study. So my Spanish one course, unit one might be a module. And a module is gonna house together a bunch of different resources that I create within Canvas. So on this page, we have just a screenshot of what a module would look like. And you can see a few of the different icons here. We have a page an assignment and a discussion that are all related to a topic, okay? So for this one, the example, the introduction to the scientific method, getting to know, know you, what biology means, and what is the scientific method. So I'm um, just thinking of that kind of introductory unit here. 
And we also have um, an actual sample in this course that we'll go into in just a moment. But as far as accessing for students, um, maybe, you know, upper elementary, fourth through um, high school teachers may direct students directly to the modules view and have them work through the course um, in that way. It provides kind of a linear layout of we're going to do this and then this and then this. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the structures that you can use when you're using modules to assist with any self-paced portions of your class. For L, um, more primary elementary, I wouldn't necessarily direct my students to the modules view, but as the teacher, I want to make sure that things are organized in the background. Um, so if I want to be able to share a specific unit um, or module with other teachers, or I want to be able to transfer it to another course that I'm going to be teaching, um, modules just kind of keeps everything nice and organized in there. And if you didn't start with modules, that's okay. If you just have pages, you can always move your pages, assignments, quizzes, discussions into a modules format um, for that to help with that organization. So I'm just gonna click on the link here in this page to show you this sample that we have. Um, and this is just a sample module here. You'll see the gray bar across the top. That's just the title of the module. And then everything that is with housed within that box is included in the module. To add a module, I'm just going to go into my modules page on the left hand side, click the blue add button, name it. I think I did one of these this morning too, so there's already a sample one in here. And then that new module will go to the bottom of the page. I can click and drag to change the order. Um, and then when I'm ready, I can add into it any of the different Canvas features. So I'm going to go back up to this module that we put in as a sample. You'll notice up here that it has a, a little bar here that says complete all items. That's because when you set up courses using modules, you have some options as far as what you can require students to do in order to work their way through that module. So those self-paced um, features. You can um, set a lock date on a module so that it won't become accessible to students until a certain date and time. You can also add requirements in there. So you can say that students have to complete all of the requirements I add in. You can say if they have to go the, through them in sequential order. If you don't check that, they can jump around to different things within that module. And then you can say they need to either complete all of them or one of them. And you can decide which ones you make required or you just have as resources in the module. And then when you add any of them in, if it's a page, you'll get the options to view the item, mark it as done, or contribute something to the page or discussion. Um, so if a student just clicks and opens it, they'll be checked off as they have viewed the item. There's a little, um, if you select mark is done, it'll pop a little bar up or button up on the top of the page. So after the student finishes, they need to say, yes, I've completed that or adding something to the page or discussion. If you do this with um, an assignment, I'm not sure if I have one in here, you can set, um, you can set it as a certain score. So they have to score at least something or they have to submit the assignment before it'll check them off as having completed that. And you can also require um, a, mo you can set a module as a prerequisite. So if I had a, maybe I have a day three canvas um, I could say that uh, the prerequisite for getting to for opening the day three canvas module would be completing day two. Um, and then that would require all of the that the prerequisite for the day three would mean that I had to complete everything that was re a requirement in the day two module. So you can see that you can um, kind of give them that self paced option when they can work at their own pace but control the flow of what they're doing and where they're headed next. Anything you want to add about modules, Mike, or any questions out there on modules? 
Um, I, the only thing I'll add, just uh, just so you everyone everyone knows, the the requirements and the prerequisites that you can include are not. You don't have to include those. Um, you can have them them all, all unlocked. That's just determined on how you want to. If you're using modules, how you want to um, your students to access their learning. Um, that's the only thing I want to add to that, Brenda. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, they are. It is optional to add those those pieces in. Um, and we've just provided, you just saw that modules page, the self-paced options page just has some links to more information on, re information on requirements and prerequisites if you're interested in that. Um, and then the next part we're going to talk about is formatting. I'm guessing that's um, kind of why most of you are here is formatting the look and customizing your Canvas course. Um, there are a lot of resources for you here and remember we are going to give you that link in just a few minutes after we go through all of these so you can join this course and then you'll have access to all of those resources and you can kind of work your way um, through them. So the first thing we're going to talk about um, banners and buttons which are very similar to each other. We're also going to talk about tables and how you can use those and set those up to look um, like I have here on this page look and act like buttons. Um, we also have some resources for you for icons if you want to add any of those in as images in your course. Um, some more information on embedding and uploading images. And then also how to embed content like Google Docs, um, Google Slides, we'll go through uh, some of that as well. So. The difference between banners and buttons, this up here, customizing Canvas, is a banner. Banners and buttons are really similar other than usually a banner is a bit, little bit longer. Um, and it's usually not linked to anything else. A button is also an image, like a banner, but it's usually a smaller size. Um, and then it's linked either to another page in your course or to an outside resource. So we'll go through, um, we'll go through those. What we've added in here is just um, some information about how you can customize banners. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to, of doing that. And then we also have a template here for you to create a banner like this one. So I'm just going to show you if I wanted to use this Google Drive banner, I would go ahead and click on this link. It's gonna make a copy for me of this template and put this copy on my drive. So now I have my own copy. I can update um, the, I think this is what I did earlier as well. Um, I can update the text in here. And then you'll also see that we have the directions in the notes in this slide deck. So you can add the text, you can change the font, you can change the background color, um, you could add in an image in there if you wanted to, and then when you're happy with what you have, you're going to go to File, Download, and you're going to select PNG Image. This is going to create a downloaded file on my device. I want to make sure that I know what it's titled. And I call it Canvas uh, Banner 2, and I'm going to put the zero in front of it so it pops up quickly. I'm also going to pay attention to what file this is going into. Um, so I have created in my downloads folder an images file where I can keep all of the images that I download. And then I am going to head back into my Canvas tab. And then I'm going to hop into Edit. Um, as we get into Edit, for those of you who um, haven't joined us uh, before now, I'm going to uh, take a little sidetrack here. Um, this autosave is a new feature. We're going to show you how to um, take advantage of that if you would like to. You'll notice that it's asking me and giving me a preview. Do you want to save the things that you were working on the last time you were on this page? And you can say yes or no. I'll go ahead and say yes because it looks the same to me. Um, and then what I'm going to do 
is just insert that image that I just created. I know it looks just like this one, so I'm going to get rid of that one and try not to confuse you. You might also notice that my toolbar here, my rich content editor, which is what they call this uh, toolbar up at the top or the RCE, this rich content editor may look a little bit different than yours. This is the new or the enhanced rich content editor. Um, we'll show you how to switch um, to this if you would like. You don't have to, and you can switch back and forth. It is a course by course setting. Um, so we'll show you that in just a minute. But we're gonna go back to that banner that we just made in Google. So the Google Slides banner that we made and we downloaded as a PNG. I'm now on my page. I've clicked edit and I am going to click to upload an image. So that banner is going to be an image. I could, um, if this were on my desktop, I could click and drag it onto here. I'm gonna go into my images and find that banner. You'll also notice it pop up with an alternate text. This is for accessibility features for any of your users who may be visually impaired. Um, you'll notice it pop up for you. You can also select decorative image if it doesn't have any um, content or it isn't something that someone would need read to them if they couldn't see the page. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and click submit. You'll see that yellow bar pop up and that way you know you're actually inserting something on the page. And there is my banner. I can decide if I want it centered on the page by using the rich content editor bars up at the top. Um, and that is my banner. Same process for buttons. Um, the only difference between a banner and a button other than the size, and we have the, those templates for you if you would like to use them, um, is that you would link a button. So if I wanted this to act as a button to take my users somewhere else in the course, I could click on it to highlight. You'll notice the blue bars all the way around the outside. And then I'm gonna go up to the top to that picture of a link and I can link outside of the course. So if I wanted this to take them to an outside website, I could do that. Or if I want it in the course, I'm gonna click on course links. I'll get this side pop up over here. And if I want it to take them back to a page, I think I'm gonna ask it to take them back to the home page. And again, you'll see that yellow highlight. That way I know I've done something. And you'll also see that I have these options pop up for links now. And this little blue arrow appears over the link button as well. So I know that there, this image that's highlighted um, has been linked to something. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of my page and click on save. And once I do that, I now have linked. I linked from a banner, but the process is the same for a button. So in buttons, we have um, a, a rounded square template for you. The same thing that we just did with banners. If, if you click on this link, it'll make a copy for you of that template and put it on your drive. And then you can edit from there. Again, add images, add text, add background colors, um, or a rectangular one with kind of like a popped out um, frame on it. Additional resources. I was so sad. I just found out this morning, one of my favorite button making factories, I'm just going to say it, the button factory was purchased apparently by ClickMinded, but it looks like it functions in a similar way. So if you're looking for um, kind of a simple button making factory, um, you can go to ClickMinded. Um, I haven't tried it for a while, so I do apologize if there's like ads that pop up and stuff. I don't I, I, I don't know, I didn't get a chance today to try it out. Um, but that is there for you. If you do use that resource, they'll, they usually have um, a color picker and uh, fonts that you can choose and sizing of your buttons. I would highly recommend that once you get your buttons set that you take a screenshot or make a note of what your settings are so that if you do need to edit or add new buttons, you can have them all matching. All right. I'm gonna head back to the home page. Mike, are we okay? Banners and buttons, anything we need to go over there? No, I think uh, we're good, thank you. Okay, thank you. 
All right. Next thing we're going to look at is tables. Um, this is kind of my, my new um, obsession with Canvas this year. So if you've seen any of our templates, many of them are, are using tables. Um, Tables are great for organizing content. When you're working on a web page, um, sometimes it can be difficult to line up text with an image next to it, um, but that layout on your page looks a lot nicer. You can always add a table um, and, make, and have it so that none of the borders show, so the users aren't gonna see it, but you get that organizational structure um, and look to your page. We've also um, included a link on here to the Canvas guide for inserting tables. So we'll go over it a little bit in here. You can use um, tables to create buttons like we had on the home page for this course. Um, they look kind of spread out and like buttons and you click on them, they're going to take you somewhere, but they're really built as a table with just a background color change. And then for those of you who are um, really into the editing piece, if you want your table to um, kind of resize itself and fit nicely on the page, you can hop into the code. We're gonna show you how to do this in just a minute um, and change the table width to 100%. Um, I have more information on using tables uh, on your homepage layout from the Canvas community. And then another um, tip on here, if you are really wanting to match colors or you have a specific color um, palette that you're trying to introduce into your course or that you wanna be using and you need to match it, I put a link here to a Chrome extension called Color Pick Eyedropper. Um, and it looks just like this little icon up here on the top of my um, browser window. And when I click on it, it's gonna give me a little crosshairs there. You can see it up in the upper uh, left-hand corner of that box that popped up. And it will let me hover over any color and kind of take an eye drop of it and give me this hex code right here. So I know what color um, this is that's on my screen and I can um, make sure to match it. Um, when I, I just copied this little hex code right here, and if I wanted to change the color of my table up here, I'm just going to show you how to do that. So on my page, I'm going to go into edit. And again, I'm getting that auto, um, auto save feature there. I'm going to go ahead and go into edit, and let's say I want to change the colors in this background here. I'm gonna go up into my rich content editor and I'm gonna to go to row properties. So this entire top row here, row properties. I'm gonna to go to the advanced tab and then I'm just going to change that hex code. So I just pasted in um, the hex code here for the background color and then I'm going to go ahead and click on save and you'll see that change right there in my table and I because I'm using that code it's going to be the exact same color as I have lower down on the page so I can really um, coordinate things on my page okay so building a table I am going to insert a table on this page and then we'll come back to this uh, HTML code stuff. I guess I'll do it right up here in the top. Okay, this one right here is just a one cell table, which is another great way um, to do a banner across the top of your page. Or if you need some page breaks in there and you wanna add a little bit of color, um, a one cell table works great. So that's just clicking on the table icon Looks very similar in the classic uh, rich content editor. Um, and I can just click on it to add one cell if I wanted to, and that'll go all the way across my page. You can see that one just popped up. Mm -hmm. And then you get this little embedded menu. So it's kind of a truncated table menu here where I can get to certain features. I can add or delete rows and columns. Um, or I can get into table properties. But if I want to get just into a specific cell property, let's say I wanna change the background color in this cell over here, I don't think there's enough contrast. 
So I'm going to highlight a single cell and then over in the, the full table menu, I'm going to go to cell and cell properties and then advanced again. And this is where I get that background color. If I click on the checkerboard, it's going to give me a palette. I also have this palette if I want to um, do my own color choosing in there, or you can always paste in that hex code. I'm just going to switch this to a nice light gray and save. And you can see that I can customize the background for individual cells within a table. This table up here that's just one cell, I can go ahead and go into table properties and add in a color there in my background. I could change the font size um, and add in some text. You can also add insert images into table cells. Okay, um, and then one other thing, or two more things I want to show you on tables. Um, one down here, this is a table, if you've seen our templates that came um, from there, but I do want to show you that you can, if I click in a cell here, I can add a row, or a column, sorry, a column in front of it. I can delete a column. I can add a row on um, before or after, wherever my cursor is in that table. And then if you are interested in a table like this, so this is just a table with its um, border set to a very thick um, setting, and then the border color is white. So that's why they look all kind of separated, but they are actually cells within this table. So again, you can um, change the color of each of those cells. So if, if these pastels are not your color scheme, um, you can certainly go in and then go into a cell, the cell properties, advanced, and change that background color. Um, darker gray here. Um, and you can do that for each one of those cells across the top. And then my recommendation would be if you're changing the colors in here, that you just delete um, the rest of the rows in that table. And once you have your colors set to what you want, that you then add rows back in if you wanted additional rows. Um, and you can see that this is resizing itself as we go. So depending on um, the text that you put in, how many rows and columns you have, um, within that window, and I can stretch it out as well, um, it'll, it'll adjust itself. So if you're interested in this table, the easiest way to get it is going to be to copy this HTML code. I know it looks kind of scary, but you only have to go in there once and copy it, and then you can jump back out. So I'm going to highlight and copy this HTML code, and then I'm actually going to jump to a blank page for this next part. So I'm going to leave this page. I'm going to cancel my changes. All right. And then I'm actually going to go and just add a new page in here. And it's asking me if I want to add this on here. I'm going to say no because I want you to see what it looks like when I do this, um, but that's pretty, um, pretty handy that it will, it'll pull that over for you and kind of guess at what you're trying to do. Um, over here, I'm going to go into the HTML code. In the classic uh, rich content editor, it actually says HTML in blue up at the top right-hand corner. On the new one, it's down here with these two um, coding symbols. Once I'm in the HTML editor, I'm going to just paste in the code that I copied. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And you'll see that pulled that whole table over for me so I can edit from there and make it um, 
what I want it to be. So if you want that table on multiple pages, my recommendation would be copying that code um, and entering it in the HTML view. All right. Questions on tables, Mike? No, I think we I think we covered the questions on tables. I do I did have a few people ask how to switch to the um, updated rich text editor. Okay. So if you could show them uh, how to do that. I think Absolutely. That would be um, should we do that now or after we do images and embedding? Why don't we do that now and then we'll come back to images and embedding. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so if you are interested in the new rich con content editor, so that editing bar that you get anytime you click on the edit button um, on pages, assignments, um, all of the features in Canvas discussion boards, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to set that. So over on the left hand side in my course, I'm going to go to settings. And then across the top, I have different tabs. I want to go all the way over to feature options. In feature options, I am looking for the RCE enhancements. So RCE enhancements, if you click on the little arrow next to these, it gives you a little bit more information. But if you don't know what RCE stands for, it stands for Rich Content Editor. Um, and you can just switch that toggle to on. You can always go and switch it back if you decide you don't like the new toolbar, um, but it is there for you. When you switch that on, you also have the option of switching on the RCE auto save. And then one more thing you'll find in here, if you are interested, um, the text that is right here, so all of this text is the classic font in Canvas. And you now have the option of switching to the elementary theming, which is this font you see over here on my in-course menu. So a little more rounded look to it. Um, the, if you switch on Canvas elementary theming, if you haven't already set your navigation in your course, um, it defaults to a little bit different um, navigation. So these blue links that you're seeing in my course over here, but you can always customize that afterwards. So what it's really doing is changing the font for you in Canvas. All right, I'm going to head back to my home page. And um, you'll see on icons, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip over that because it's really just a link to resources for icons that you can use as images. Um, and then for images, it's going to be that same process that we used for the banners and the buttons um, that you can just on your page embed an image. So we have some resources here that will walk you through these steps. I'm going to go ahead and go into edit. And if I want to embed an image on my page, I'm going to go right here, just like we did when we were uploading the banner. I'm going to upload an image, or if I already have images in my course that I want to use again, they are right here. So you could click on course images, and then anything that you already had in your course, you'd be able to pull over. I'm going to upload an image. So you can see here, if I just, if I have things on my desktop that I want to drag and drop, if I want to search through Unsplash for something, I can do that. If I have a URL or that website link directly to a limit image, I can do that. Or if I want to search on any images that I have on my device, um, I'm going to go ahead and just grab one that I have. Click open, you'll see it pull in. Again, it's going to ask you either to describe the image or click decorative image. And then I want this to embed or show up on the page. Once it's there, you can click, you'll get those, um, the four corners and I can resize just by clicking and dragging in there. Um, I could decide if I wanted it centered in my page or um, right justified or left justified. Um, it's not going to stay if you try and click and drag it to place it on your page. So it's not the same as working in like a Google slide or um, something like that where you have a little bit more control over where that image goes. So you're going to need to think about if you want to use tables in order to put that image in a certain space. 
or if you want to just use the alignment buttons in the rich content editor. All right. I am going to click back now um, to show you um, embedding. So embedding, just like we just embedded an image, you can also embed um, Google Slides or Google Docs. Uh, you can embed YouTube content um, for elementary students who are using district devices um, in order for them to access content um, from YouTube. It needs to be embedded in a Canvas page for them. Um, so you can see a couple of embedded videos up here. I'm going to show you how uh, to embed a Google dot or a Google slide in just a moment. And then if you're really into embedding and there's other stuff that you really want to be inside your Canvas page, this uh, Canvas Live is the uh, Canvas community. And this is about an hour long um, tutorial on embedding. So um, lots of resources for you there. I'm going to go ahead and get into this page and click edit. And I am not going to save the auto stuff. I am going to add a little bit of space here. And then you can see my cursor. I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to use the external tools feature. In the new rich content editor, it's called apps and it's this little plug, uh, a plug-in here. Um, in the old one, it's that little blue V to get to external tools. I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm just gonna grab a Google slideshow. I do wanna point out to you, you'll see two different Google integrations here. Um, they, we don't have control over how the names appear or the order in which they appear in this external tool uh, finder. Um, usually it's alphabetical. Sometimes it's the most recent one that you've added at the bottom, um, but for these purposes, for embedding, I want to choose the one that says Google Apps. Okay, so Google Apps is going to help me embed content on a page. And this just opens my Google Drive files. So I can search for any of my files here. Um, I know that I have a slideshow in here, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that. You'll see it just pops everything up. Once I select an item, then you'll see that I have the option to either embed or link. So a link is just gonna give me a hyperlink. So students would click on it, it would take them out to that resource. Embed actually pulls the resource into the page in Canvas. Um, the first time you do it, you'll have to authorize. Um, you can see that you can embed into tables as well. And then, when I save, on here, um, my students are able to actually click through the slide deck. So if you wanted them to have access to a presentation, they can click through um, any presentations that you have in slides that you embed in your Canvas course. All right. Doing okay, Mike? Yeah. Okay. A um, lot of information out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are going to give you the link to this Canvas course now, this customizing um, Canvas course. When you click on the link, it's going to enroll you as a student in the course, so you'll have access to um, all of the resources that are in there. I'm probably going to go back in and clean up a few of the um, experimental things that I threw in there, um, so it looks a little bit uh, nicer for you. Um, we will stay in the chat. If we notice any common um, questions or themes, we can pop back in and let you guys, um, sorry. Um, try and answer those as a whole group. Um, and I think, there we go. There's the link for you. Um, we'll add that in a couple more times just so that you can see it. Um, we know you wanna get your hands on it. We just wanted to make sure you had um, some information before you got in here to start playing with it. And we know that there are gonna be some um, questions about steps on how to do things. So. 
um, let us know. We'll do our, the best we can to help you with that now. And please do remember that we are recording this. And so we will make this recording available to you so that you can um, get back in and watch um, the portions that you need to for some of those steps.